Welcome to the Caribbean Leadership Radio Series, produced by the Caribbean Leadership Program under the Caribbean Center for Development Administration, CARICAD, where we provide a number of leadership development interventions tailored for the Caribbean context in support of public sector transformation as well as regional development. In this Caribbean Leadership Radio Series, we will be discussing a range of leadership issues within the public sector context which impact our national and regional development in the Caribbean. The Caribbean Leadership Radio Series, where Caribbean leaders discuss Caribbean leadership. Here's your host, Dr. Loy Parks. Today, we will be looking at the topic, the role of the Permanent Secretary. And we have with us Mrs. Arlene McComey. Arlene McComey is a retired Permanent Secretary from the government of Trinidad and Tobago. She has served in the public service there for over 36 years. And her last 12 years, she served as Permanent Secretary in a number of ministerial portfolios, including national security, social services delivery, public administration, and local government. She also is a member of our community of practice of leadership development specialists and a consultant with the Caribbean Leadership Program. Mrs. Nakomi comes with a wealth of experience about this topic, and so we just want to welcome her. Welcome, Mrs. Nakomi. Thank you very much, Lloyd. It's my pleasure. We want to start off by asking you, share with us your personal journey, how you got into the senior ranks of public sector leadership and management. I really entered the public service with my degree from the University of the West Indies. So I entered as an administrative cadet. And in that position, we received training about government, you know, during our period of probation. We no longer have this position, sadly. I think we're looking at a position of, uh, um, can't remember the name of it, but like an administrative um, internee to know and understand so that people can move forward. But um, that, I think, gave me a push because I didn't start in the clerical, I started in the admin. Um, but as I went through um, work, I think I began to understand that maybe administration wasn't all that I wanted to be or to do. And I attended, well, it wasn't Arthur Lockjack Graduate School then, it was the Institute of Business. Yes. And I did a grad diploma in HR because I wanted, that was my career goal at the time, to become a director of HR, which I, upon graduation, I eventually um, became. Um, I think I was told after a while that I had to adjust or expand my career goals um, from persons who I would imagine saw in me something more. Uh, so with, you know, um, trepidation, I did that. And I must say though that I think I've been fortunate. I got opportunities. I had mentors, especially in the Ministry of National Security, permanent secretaries that allowed me to um, do things even out of my sphere, you know, challenges that uh, I accepted and went forth boldly. So it, it has been interesting and I thoroughly enjoyed my career in the public service. If you were to ask the average citizen around the Caribbean, I think we would find that there's a general lack of understanding about the role of the permanent secretary and the importance of that role in public service and in public service delivery and development. Define for us, what is the role of the Permanent Secretary? Um, I think the, the Permanent Secretary has a number of roles. Uh, the first, I would imagine, is to, uh, not imagine really, but you, you have to accept. It is to lead and manage the ministry. Yes, there is a minister, 
but the permanent secretary is the accounting officer responsible for the finances, uh, responsible to the parliament for some aspects of your stewardship and how you know you you manage the finances of the people um, and also for stewardship of the persons within the ministry ensuring that things work well uh, the other area is policy the permanent secretary is the main policy advisor to the minister even though the minister is allowed advisors in the <clears throat> sphere of operations in which the ministry has its mandate but the permanent secretary is the main advisor and therefore you need to give the minister the best advice possible i think too you need to as a permanent secretary you need to understand the various roles of the minister and the minister has different roles whether elected or appointed the minister has a constituency that he's accountable for within government and he's also a minister for a specific portfolio so as a permanent secretary you need to understand those roles and assist as far as possible without being partisan um, how you can assist that minister in actioning and implementing the priorities of government. Another role is um, oversight of the daily functions of the ministry, whether it is from HR to administration to procurement to financial matters. That IT as well. The central themes that are the foundation of the operations of a ministry. The permanent secretary has a main responsibility for understanding each area. Because people are coming to you for advice. So you must be able to give them that advice, help them to make decisions by possibly asking them questions. When they come to you, they're not sure what to do, but you need to know the area. And unfortunately, a number of persons um, coming through the permanent secretary these days come through from a technical area and therefore don't know and understand some of these uh, areas. Indeed. Um, and so we are going to take a little break right now. But when we come back, we want to continue to talk about the responsibilities of the permanent secretary and to explore further what are some of the challenges facing that role in the Caribbean context. We will be right back. The Caribbean Leadership Radio Series, where Caribbean leaders discuss Caribbean leadership. Across Caribbean public services, there is great demand for transformational leadership to create an environment that fosters innovation in public service delivery. But how do you know if your organization has this enabling environment? Grounded in research, the Caribbean Leadership Project has developed an enabling environment assessment. This provides a wide range of strategies and actions to help take public sector organizations and regional institutions to a higher level in enabling transformational leaders. To find out how you can use this assessment to foster and inspire purpose-driven leadership, to build leadership capacity for action, encourage collaboration, and support the achievement of results. Visit us at www.clptoolkit.org and contact us at info at caribbeanleadership.org. Let us help your organization learn, network, succeed. The Caribbean Leadership Radio Series, where Caribbean leaders discuss Caribbean leadership. You are listening to the Caribbean Leadership Radio Series and we are exploring the topic of the role of the Permanent Secretary in the Caribbean Public Service today. And we are delighted to have with us Mrs. Arlene McComey, retired Permanent Secretary from the Government of Trinidad and Tobago. 
Mrs. McCormie, you had started explaining to us in the last segment about the role of the permanent secretary. Can you also explore with us what are some of the major challenges facing permanent secretaries in the Caribbean today, as you see it? Today, I truly believe that permanent secretaries do have some major challenges. As I said earlier, some persons come through to the position from a technical place. So one of the main challenges is the knowledge of the job. The permanent secretary, in assuming the role, should really have good sound knowledge of the basic requirements of the job, and that's not always so. And generally, we have not had a culture of mandatory training and capacity building of persons for the positions and therefore persons come through to the position not knowing and understanding some of the key um, matters that they need to deal with. Yes. The, also, um, I think an understanding of the nature of the job, the fact that it is strategic. Strategic meaning that you must know and understand the entire context of government, not only your portfolio, and consequently understand the wider implications of any decisions you may be required you know, to make. The knowledge, skills, and abilities of ministers is another challenge. Um, at these times, this is because many persons come into the job with little or no understanding of what is government and how it works. And therefore, uh, they see the position as one of power and sometimes make requests of permanent secretaries that um, could bring them close to breaking the law or um, if, if regulation infractions, to put it another way, you know, and you don't want that. So that is, is an area now that I think is, is a major challenge for permanent secretary. Some of the demands made on them, if they don't know, their actions may not be in sync with what is required for the job and another major challenge is i think the whole partisan nature of our politics in the region uh, many of our governments continue to as they get into government they don't seem to understand the difference between the party elections and all that hype and the manifesto mm -hmm. to the fact that in government you're now responsible for managing, leading, taking care of all of the people within the country. It makes it difficult at times for yes. secretaries to manage in that environment. Indeed, because there is such a vast difference between the skills and the tasks to win an election yes. as opposed to governing a country, which requires yes. a different mindset and a different skill set. Yes, it does. But at the end of the day, they must both synchronize. Yes. Because both there on behalf of the people of the country. So we must know how to work together to ensure that we are delivering the best service possible. Given what you have just said, what do you see as the key competencies a permanent secretary should possess? And along with that, what steps did you take personally to develop in and for that role of permanent secretary? Okay. Um, as I said, I think my um, early career in the public service really built capacity in a number of areas that prepared me for the role. Um, and I know and understand that this is not always possible, but I think it needs to be now an, um, an active or a deliberate step to train per persons who are on track for becoming permanent secretaries or who wish to become permanent secretaries. But competencies that a permanent secretary needs 
um, first and foremost, it, I don't know if you will look at it as a competency, you have to be aware of who you are. Yes, um, self-knowledge and self-awareness. Yes, and your values, your beliefs, you need to start there. That helps you with your confidence and your ability to know what you can and cannot do. You need to be knowledgeable in the matters of government, the rules, regulations, and therefore a permanent secretary should be someone who is a continuous learner, who is always seeking information to help them to make that job better. Especially because people do move from portfolio to portfolio. So being able to learn quickly is definitely a competence required. It should be. Um, so you need to be flexible. But you need to know how you should not let movement to um, various positions deter you. As a matter of fact, I worked as a permanent secretary in six ministries. Wow. What I did was put myself on a learning curve in each place, whether three months, six months, depending on the complexity of the ministry and the size, mm -hmm. to know and understand the technical aspects of that, you know, portfolio. As I tell people, the, the basic foundation that we spoke about, the admin, the legal, the procurement, the HR, that goes with you and is relevant wherever you go as a permanent secretary. But you need to learn the portfolio of the ministry that you, you know, are in. So therefore, to do that, you must have very good interpersonal skills because you need to learn from the people in the organization that you would, you know, meet there. You have to trust that they would be providing you with the required information. Um, and as I speak to trust, a permanent, that is also a competency area that I think a permanent secretary must be able to engender an environment of trust within an organization. Be true to your word. What you say should be followed by your actions. The two, you know, must not vary. So you must be able to lead by example. You don't know how much you are under a microscope uh, from the person within the organization. And I think you, you definitely need to be flexible and agile. You need to hear from people, you need to understand people's perspective, you need to give them the respect of the knowledge that they would bring to that situation and be able to work through the change if needed. You know, um, the permanent secretary must also be a visible champion within the organization. That um, encourages and enables and encourages your officers to work towards producing results. Uh, you also need to understand, and it has to be a competency here, to train up your followers, standing that leaders have followers. And yes. So you must ensure that as you continue, you work towards training and enhancing the capability of the persons. You must be able to delegate to them and trust that they will be able to do. And okay. That you have assisted them in doing the best job, you know, that they can. We are going to have to take another short break, but when we return, we want to explore some of your achievements as permanent secretary. So we take a short break. Do stay with us. The Caribbean Leadership Radio Series, where Caribbean leaders discuss Caribbean leadership. Does your organization have leaders with the self-awareness and confidence to lead effectively? Can they develop high-performing teams? Can they work effectively with multiple stakeholders? And are they equipped to navigate change and complexity? For these and other leadership challenges, 
the Caribbean Leadership Program offers a suite of virtual, face-to-face -face and customized interventions to meet your needs. Our five-day workshop on leading change and transition will provide senior executives with the mindset shift and tools to successfully lead change initiatives. Our Transformational Leadership Development Program is ideal for preparing high potential leaders for succession to executive roles. And our Mid-Level Leadership Development Program is perfect for those leading from the middle. For details on these and other offerings, visit our website at www.caribbeanleadership.org. Join us to learn, network, succeed. The Caribbean Leadership Radio Series, where Caribbean leaders discuss Caribbean leadership. Welcome back to the Caribbean Leadership Radio Series, and we are discussing the topic of the role of the Permanent Secretary, and we are delighted to have with us Mrs. Arlene McComey, retired Permanent Secretary, now consultant in Trinidad and Tobago, and indeed consultant for the wider region. Mrs. McComey, you have been sharing about the roles and responsibilities and the competencies that a permanent secretary needs to have and develop. In your 12 years as a permanent secretary in the government of Trinidad and Tobago, what have been some of your greatest achievements? And what are those things you would have done differently upon reflection? I look at achievements uh, in the way that they would have impacted uh, people, especially our wider citizenry. And there I can think of two main achievements. One, championing the TT Connect project to fruition, establishing the system. It took quite a while, and um, but it came from one minister registering concern that I was in public administration then, registering concern that we are reforming and modernizing and trying to do all these things, but if the citizens feeling or the beneficiary of what we are doing, and we were challenged to, you know, try to make a difference. So we went through a process that took, um, I think, more than a year. Change in the public sector never goes as quickly as you think. Right, and uh, I had some really dedicated officers who worked towards it. Eventually, we were able to use the government's backbone, which gov.tt, um, Trinidad and Tobago's internet sits on, um, the gov.tt backbone uh, was able to host our TT Connect platform and TT Connect delivers government services to the people and if um, anyone is interested and they Google, they will recognize that it uh, delivers now um, more than or just about and they are increasing all the time 52 services of government. If you are in Cedrus, which is one of our outer regions, um, you can go through a TT Connect service center and apply for your passport and, uh, you know, they go through the process and you can eventually get it there. You can apply for jobs through TT Connect. They work with a lot of government ministries and departments and they continue to do that. The other area I think is impacting people's lives in the public service. At the Ministry of Planning, I um, took charge of a project, of a project, and this is where you have to understand, as a permanent secretary, your sphere of influence and what you are responsible for. Um, a previous permanent secretary had promised about eight years ago to resolve a situation where half the staff of an organization were on short term contracts and therefore had no benefits or terms and conditions. And we were looking at um, transforming that organization. And if those people were not taken care of in terms of settling or working on their status, it would have caused a major issue. So even while the minister said this was not a priority, I recognized that 
it wasn't something that I needed to have the minister's concurrence, even though I kept the minister in the loop. But I took charge of it and went through the process, and the persons are now in positions. A lot of them, once they retire, the positions will um, not be um, filled. But they are now able to get leave, maternity leave, sick leave. They will get a pension. A number of people would have gone home without pension, just their national insurance, you know. So I, I consider uh, that as, as one of the achievements uh, impacting people. And it really came home to me one day when I visited the organization and the person told me, they said, P.S., I am only here because of what you are doing for us. Wow. And because I, I didn't really focus the project I just started. And she said, you are working on correcting our status. I said, oh, okay, you are most welcome. People can't hear about the vision that you have for the organization if they don't know that you care about them at an individual and personal level. As we come closer to the end of this interview, I wanted you to just share with us one thing that you'd say to a permanent secretary, somebody who's aspiring to become one. What recommendations do you have, whether it is from your achievements or from things that didn't go so well? One or two things, be acquainted with the requirements for the position. Know whether you are eligible for the position or not. And that is easy. You can investigate with your establishment or service commissions. You need to train up yourself and ensure that you have the required qualifications. I mentioned knowing your sphere of influence and be confident enough to walk in the path. Don't be afraid to accept challenges. Yes, it's not a role for the faint-hearted at all. Right. Understand what leadership is about, and it is not the position. So know that as you're going into the, into the job, you have roles and responsibilities that are heavy on your shoulder. Okay? And of course, as I said, know who you are. Understand what you believe. Uh, I think um, some of the um policy what we need going forward uh we need to ensure that training is mandatory for persons going into the position you know as i've read and done research i recognize that many of our especially commonwealth countries who are succeeding have mandatory training for persons who are on that path yes indeed they do yes yeah, so it's, I think, very necessary. I think the, we need to look a little deeper, maybe a lot deeper, into the clarity of the roles of permanent secretaries and ministers and um, how both parties can better work together to support each other to achieve what they are required to achieve. We just wanted to thank you. We are running out of time. This has really been insightful. What I'm summarizing from what you're saying is self-awareness, preparation, development, knowing how to engage persons, and being a continuous learner. These are all the necessary ingredients to being an effective and successful permanent secretary. Mrs. McComey, we want to thank you so much for making the time to share with us so generously. You are most welcome. It was absolutely a pleasure. You've been listening to the Caribbean Leadership Radio Series. Please check with this station for other episodes in our series. To learn more about the Caribbean Leadership Program, please visit our website at www.caribbeanleadership.org. Thanks for joining us.